Today's subject is no laughing matter. I'm just kidding, it totally is! It's laughing gas, nitrous, the NOS! And we're not about huffing it and getting the giggles, we're about cranking out horsepower with nitrous oxide. We've talked about engines before. To get more power, you need more boom. And to get more boom, you need more oxygen to burn more gas more quickly. Gasoline needs oxygen to burn, just like every other flammable thing. And the more oxygen you add to something, the more of it you can burn. A cylinder is only so big, which means it can only fit so much air. And one way to get more air in is to force it in with forced induction. And that's where turbochargers and superchargers come into play. And the way we're talking about today is sneaking it in with nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide gas was discovered in 1772 by Joseph Priestley. This guy was all about isolating gases because that made you pretty cool in the late 1700s. I tell the best story! He tried to find a use for nitrous as a preservative, but it didn't work. And all it really did was make people giggle. And so that's what people used it for through most of the 1800s. It was a party trick and an anesthetic. Nobody figured out how to do anything else with it until World War II, when the Germans started using it in plane engines for better high altitude performance. But turbochargers became more advanced and reliable, so its use didn't last long. You've probably heard folks refer to nitrous Nitrous oxide is NOS. NOS! NOS is actually an acronym for Nitrous Oxide System. It's a name brand, just like some people call tissues Kleenex, or the way Nolan calls his inline skates rollerblades. Nitrous oxide is a way to get more oxygen into the engine. But if oxygen's what we want, why not just shoot more oxygen in there? Like from an oxygen tank? Well, pioneering drag racer Barney Navarro tried that out in the 50s, and well, it didn't work as well as he'd hoped. He found that a straight shot of oxygen lets the fuel explode at pretty much any place that's hot enough inside the engine. That's right, it's the dreaded ping, pre-ignition. And what Navarro got was detonation. He really messed up his engine and just decided it wasn't worth it. <laughs> the benefit of nitrous oxide is that it doesn't release the oxygen until it's already mixed with the gas in the cylinder and ready to blow. The nitrous is in a canister. When it gets shot out, it expands. An added benefit is that when liquids expand into gas, they cool off. And cooler air is denser air, remember? It's not until the nitrous oxide gets into the cylinder that it releases the oxygen. In a hot engine, the normally stable molecules of nitrogen and oxygen split, releasing O2. Now, with extra oxygen in the cylinder, all you gotta do is add the right amount of fuel and boom! More power! And the dreaded pre-ignition? Well, both the splitting of the NOS and the release of those freed up nitrogen atoms help to prevent pinging. Suck. It's kismet! Yeah, One nitrous shot is able to bump output from 50 to 300 horsepower. It really is the best bang for your buck in terms of buying speed for your car. There's two overall methods of nitrous delivery, known as dry injection and wet injection. In dry injection, the liquid nitrous oxide squirted into the air intake by itself, and the fuel system rigged to add more gasoline to the cylinders. In wet injection, nitrous oxide and gasoline are injected into the air intake together, and that requires different mods to your fuel system. Because it won't release oxygen before it gets to the heat of the cylinder, NOS can be injected as the air enters the engine or right at the cylinder with the fuel. Some systems are tooled by hand, like an old school carburetor, and other systems are computer automated to get the right mix of gas to O2 with millisecond precision, sometimes at the point of injection. When you want that neck snap and horsepower, you activate the system by just pushing a button that's installed in the cockpit. The delivery systems are designed to mix the right amount of fuel as the pressurized nitrous pours into the engine. If nitrous sits in the line, it's at a different density than if it's under pressure. Because the amount of gas to inject with the nitrous is based on liquid nitrous oxide, a valve releases any air and nitrous oxide gas that might be trapped in the lines. Without a purge, the car would bog down for an instant until the liquid nitrous oxide reaches the intake. It would run rich and not fire right. When the purge system is activated, one or more plumes of nitrous oxide will flash from liquid into vapor as it releases. This brings liquid nitrous oxide all the way up from the storage tank to the valve that will release it in the engine. It's pretty cool. So if nitrous oxide's so great at making all this power, why don't we just inject it all the time and drive everywhere like we're Jesse from Fast and the Furious. 
for one, makes an engine work way harder. And car manufacturers don't necessarily engineer their engines to take all of that stress. It's just bad news. And storage and cost can be a pain too. For example, running a 125 horsepower shot from a 10 pound bottle of nitrous will probably get you about 10 quarter mile drag races. That's 10 pounds of NOS every two and a half miles. At about $5 a pound, you're gonna find out your car's stock horsepower is perfectly adequate. And hopefully you'll stop complaining about these gas prices, Nolan. Since continuous use would get crazy expensive and put added strain on the engine components, nitrogen's just used in short bursts. That's why it's popular in drag racing and not in other types of racing. Then, right at the beginning of the 21st century, a little movie called The Fast and the Furious came along, and a couple of guys racing nitrous-equipped four and four-cylinder cars changed everything. All right, this is not everything, but it sparked an interest in the compact racing community. And now, you're just as likely to see nitrous oxide injection on an imported four-cylinder as you are on a domestic V8. So even though we're not sucking it down and breathing it in, shooting it into an engine will still make you giggly. <laughs> Subscribe to Donut, please guys. And thanks to Garage Amino for sponsoring this episode. Garage Amino is an app that connects car enthusiasts from around the world. And people write us all the time, they're like, hey, I have a Mahindra Jeep with a Peugeot XD3 engine. How can I make it fast? And I'm like, we don't have those here, so I don't know. Go get Garage Amino. Listen, Garage Amino lets you connect and share pictures, get advice, and use public chat rooms to figure this stuff out. Even find inspiration for your next dream project. The app is like a car forum, but turboed, supercharged with NOS. NOS. It's got a featured feed of the best new content, and the community is super active, friendly, and welcoming. You like original blog posts? They got them. You like historical analyses of cars? They got them. Concept builds? New car reviews? Parts? Accessory? They've got all that, Holmes. There's always something happening on Garage Amino, and if you're worried about missing out, there's a pop-up that tells you how many people are online and what they're up to. From chat rooms to quizzes to polls and blogs, there's always new content to interact with. And you can contribute to the community yourself super easy. So get inspired. Connect with people who share your passion for cars from all over the world. Check out the app, Garage Amino. It means a lot to us that everybody's enjoying what we do here. The more you like, comment, and share, the more cool stuff we get to do with you. So smash that like button and share this with your bud. Follow Donut Media on Instagram, at Donut Media. To learn about gas and how it mixes with O2, check out this gasoline video. Check out this wheelhouse Nolan did on the rivalry between Dodge and Ford.